circumstances at the moment? Um, I want to start by saying it's been very discouraging for the security agencies mm -hmm. okay. because um, the uh, last Friday's incident in Yobe was uh, something that was um, kind of appalling because we found a situation where indigents of the state or some youths were busy clapping and cheering these miscreants as they set security personnel on fire. Yes. And some uh, residents of the area even opened their doors to hide some of these miscreants. So you begin to wonder, when Nigerians come out and begin to shout, security agencies are not doing anything, and yet applaud those who are attacking security agencies. I wonder where they want us to get the encouragement from. When uh, uh, Siasia did not qualify the Eagles, everybody came shouting, shouting, making so much noise that Siasia must be removed. But when it comes to security issues, well, the security agencies or operators are not human beings. They are not Nigerians. So they could be set on fire, they could be killed, and nobody's saying anything. There's this deafening silence, and we are worried. Nobody is saying anything. Nobody is coming out to complain. Nobody is coming out to say, okay, why is this happening? Sorry, let us get to you here, oh. because uh, every time we talk on this program, we give out numbers. We expect people to participate to help out in all of this. Uh, now we're talking about the citizens and the people. Are you saying people in uh, the locality, they were cheering people as the security They were operatives? cheering people at the, as the operatives were being killed. They were cheering the people that were killing the operatives. They opened their doors and even hit them. I mean, these are our children. These are our brothers. These are our husbands. Well, just a couple of days ago, we had a uh a rare admiral here who was a council security expert. Uh, yeah, Akban. And he, um, he spoke on the nature of terrorists and how most times they tend to play the false Robin Hood. You know, that, I'm not justifying whatever it is that, you know, those people did, but that could in some way explain why they were clapping. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so, Mope. It should go beyond that. Since all this trouble started, how many people have actually come out to make an attempt? And anyway, everybody's shouting, oh, the NSA is not doing much. The IGP is not doing much. The SSS has gone to sleep. You know, there's no technology. We don't have a security force so on what ground. So what do you think accounts for their behavior? If you don't think it's I wouldn't really know. Syndrome. I wouldn't really know. I'm telling you the truth. It's just to tell you how bad we have become. We don't have any regards for human life. Now, I, I want to ask, in a state like Yobi, for instance, the SSS in Yobi, we are less than 200 personnel. Now, when the crisis erupted in Egypt, for instance, Egypt, I think their police force was about, uh, is about 3 million before the crisis. But in the whole of Nigeria, we are about 150 million. Yeah. We have less than maybe 200,000 policemen. Are you now saying... So in other words, the people should also... Uh, of course, the people have, have to be part of it. There is no nation in the world that has been able to fight security without its citizens. But where the citizens now become uh, 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 maybe mates, we, or, or, okay, they, they now kind of encourage the terrorists, what do you want security agencies to do? Okay. You know, there must be, sorry, Mark, but there must be some kind of, uh, uh, should I say, individual or figure that the people... Uh, respect so much. So we, we actually talked about the traditional institutions the last time. Uh, have they been speaking to these people? Have they I want to talked? ask you because of, of course everybody wants to come on, on air to talk. Have they come saying, okay, let's use this channel to be able to reach out to these people? No. It's only that Nigeria does not have security. That's all you keep hearing. Oh, Marilyn, it talks too much. The SSS has become too visible. This, this, that. The president is sleeping. Okay. Now, let me tell you, Whatever we are seeing in the Northeast did not start now. It started 11 years, about 11 years back. And the only person that had at least the moral conscience to be able to attempt was the former president, Obasanjo, who, of course, you know, got some of them arrested between uh, 1999 to 2007. When they were arrested, they could not be taken and tried in court 
Because of course, you know, we didn't have any legislation to back it. So when people said, okay, why were they arrested and released? Was there any enabling law for you to try these people? So we have to sit down. I don't know whether, you know, our people have just gone to sleep. I used an example of Siasia and football. Nigerians cherish football than human life. There is uh, there's something here. I mean, of course, there is, if there's anything we have been able to establish, it's that there is a lack of trust for security agencies. It's not true. From the people. It's not because true. Because there has to be something to explain the attitude of It's not <clears throat> normal that you see even a fellow human being, regardless of whether or not that person's a security operative, you know, being burnt or being killed and you're happy and you're rejoicing. There is something there. There, no, is, remember. there is a disconnect. We have to be able to account for that. Because if we say that it's not a lack of trust or it's not the fact that secure, uh, ter terrorists are uh, playing the false Robin Hood by saying, making all sort of statements, we'll take FAC on, we'll take on the Ramfuck chairman, we'll kill anybody who's stealing our money and stuff like that, then we have to be able to account for that. Otherwise, we might never be able to bridge that gap. Let me ask you, these people that are making these statements, have you seen them? You know Marilyn Oga, you see me face to face. I come sit here and I talk, isn't it? Look, let me tell you, like uh, over the uh, Salah holiday, all of a sudden, there was these rumors making its round that the US, the Canadian embassies and Australian embassies had sent out a travel alert saying that three major hotels in Abuja were no-go area. And of course, you know, I mean, we just had to come out. Because of course, before this time, know that the, the, uh, the, the service had intercepted some school pupils, you know, who maybe, I don't know what, what um, excitement they were getting from sending false text messages that places were going to be bombed. Now, I'm saying we are allowing the, the society to deteriorate to a point where we might not be able to pick it up. Even after that statement, you know, members of the press could even trust. Let me tell you the truth. We have allowed our nation to be infiltrated to the point that anybody can come from anywhere and pass a message to you without recourse to security agencies. You can't do it anywhere. It's only in Nigeria. Let's be sincere with ourselves. And so we must stop. We must put a stop somehow to be able to say, yes, this is our country. If we are not open our doors to people to come, you know, you know, you want to, you don't want to be an island unto yourself. So let people come. We won't be having some of these complications that we are, we are getting ourselves into. So it means that that alert uh, was actually predicated on some of those speculations. Of course. Of course. Now, I want to ask. I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm, I, I have nothing, you know. The service doesn't have anything. We have a very good working relationship with all the embassies. But I want to ask that we have missions. We have embassies abroad, for instance. If we have a message, or our embassies abroad have a message, can they just go to the media? Did they go to the media? Or yeah, we it, it, no, it, it, it's not done. We understand that this message was actually meant for US citizens in Nigeria. And I don't know how How usually. did it get to the media? However it got to the media, I mean, I the media also goes we to have, the internet. We have to begin to talk to ourselves. We have to begin to talk to ourselves. Oh. That's the truth about it. And of course, sorry, yeah. you know, we have to talk to ourselves. And also, we have to also understand that, you know, when people come out, I'm, 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 not, I'm not advocating for government. If government is not doing uh, what, what it has promised its people that it wants to do, people should shout. But every time we come out and say, oh, no, the president is sleeping. The NSA does not know anything. Look, he's an army man. He should go back. You know, he's retired. He should go to his village or get something to do. What contributions have we brought to the table? Well, anyway, that's why we're talking about solutions now, because everyone has really come to realize that, that we have a problem in our hands. But again, the, the picture you just painted that uh, some Nigerians would take delight in seeing that uh, they, those who are in the vanguard are fighting these bad guys in the process of being killed, they rejoice. Is something that we should also work on. So how can we really change all of this psyche? Because we talk about a traditional institution, even though they haven't come to us, we, we'll try to find out if the, maybe the service or the security operatives have been speaking with them because we know full well that some of them are almost like gods in their communities. When they speak to these people, they will be listened to. 
We don't want them to come to us. We don't want them to come to us. They're Nigerians. We are all Nigerians. And if the world this kind of authority, they should be able to use it, exercise it positively for the nation, you know. But we are being left on our own. Security agencies, to me, have been excised out of the Nigerian nation, you know. It's only the president. Look, let me tell you. Um, uh, yes, the president is trying, is trying because, of course, we're acquiring capabilities. I said, yeah, we're acquiring technology, we're acqui acquiring capabilities. And, of course, he's gone ahead to say, okay, SSS, recruit more personnel. Police, recruit more personnel. But even if all of us, even if we have to take the 150 Nigerians and make them security agencies, um, agents or operatives, if you're not responsible to your immediate society, we will get, we'll get nowhere. That's exactly what I'm saying. Look, um, we had to buy what we call bus cutter. 